Howdy and welcome back. So let's talk about how we can go ahead and use our doubly linked list iterators. But before we implemented this, I just want to, I don't know, point out something interesting. If we implemented a container such as a doubly linked list and did not provide some sort of iter iterators, we would not have been able to use objects of this type in a range based for loop. So here we have a doubly linked list object uh, list. Its uh, elements are of type integer and it's initialized with uh, 10, 20, 30. So it has three nodes. Um, the node at the head stores um, the integer value of 10, that at the tail 30 and 20 resides in between those. If we went to go ahead and say for auto value in list, so a range based for statement, or we just wanted to simply uh, output uh, each value within list, we would be we would be encountered or we would encounter an error when we went to compile our uh, program. What we're going to see here is an invalid range expression for type doubly linked list of end, no viable, viable begin function available. So obviously the range based for loop relies on the objects that are um, that are being used uh, within it uh, to have some sort of iterator implemented for them. So after we've uh, implemented this, so at this point, this is the behavior that we'd observe. We can go ahead and pass in our list objects uh, to a range based for loop, which will allow us to iterate over each element uh, presenting within it and operating on each of those in some sort of fashion. Here I'm simply printing out the integer values to standard output. So we see 10, 20, and 30. That's pretty cool. But what if you want to go ahead and use those um, uh, iterators uh, within a regular old for statement? So this is kind of the old school way about, of going about it. But nonetheless, let's you know think about this a little bit more. So as we begin setting this up, um, after implementing our iterator type and updating our doubly linked list uh, type, we can go ahead and do the following. So let's go ahead and compose a old fashioned for statement. What we're going to do here is introduce i as the um, kind of control variable within this process. And i is going to be type of, it's going to be typed doubly linked list in, int of iterator. And remember that this was defined as a synonym for our doubly linked list iterator. In this case, since that iterator was instantiated with int for t, it would be a of int. So that's what type i is. Now let's go ahead and kind of walk through this process. i is going to be initialized with an iterator to list.begin. Okay, so at this point, let me set this up real quick. So we have our doubly linked list up here. Um, and let's go ahead and think about this. So our iterator i is going to point, oops, it's going to point to that node. So this i's current is going to have the address of that node. We'll then go ahead and check to see whether i is not equal to list end. Remember list end is going to return an iterator to one past the last element and that nodes current is initialized with the null pointer. Now remember on this comparison, we're checking to see whether the um, i's current is equal to the iterator returned by list n's current. So we're doing a comparison of addresses. And in this case, the address stored in iterator i is not the null pointer. So we'll go ahead and hit the loop of the body of this uh, for statement. Here we can see that we're dereferencing i. Well, remember what it means to dereference an object of our doubly linked list um, iterator type. It's going to give us the, so it will be currents data is what's going to be returned here because that's how we've defined this operation. So we're going to observe the integer value of 10. Now, when we come up um, here to the top and move i forward one, remember that plus plus i prefix increment was defined to essentially set i's current variable to currents next. So that's going to move i from kind of the, the first node to the second node. We go ahead and check the condition. In this case, i's current is not 
that of list in, which list n's current is the null pointer. So we hit the body of the loop, d reference i, and we'll go ahead and observe the integer value of 20. We'll go ahead and move i forward one more time, um, or, well, another time. So we hit that and i gets moved to be associated with that node because i's current is storing the address of this node right here. Okay, so let's kind of continue on this process. Uh, I is not equal, I's current value is not equal to the uh, current value of the iterator return by list n. So we go ahead and jump into our for statement and dereference i, which was defined to return the um, current data. So we'll go ahead and observe here the integer value of 30. 30, and then we go ahead and increment i, which is going to move i to currents, i's current to currents next, which is going to be the null pointer. And at this point, our conditional uh, controlling this loop is no longer satisfied. So we'll pick up directly after. So one cool additional thing to note is that at this point, we're all ready to begin using our doubly linked list objects in conjunction with the STL algorithm. So we could do something like find uh, list dot begin, list dot end. So that's our sequence, which we're searching within. And we could say we are looking for the value of 20. Since 20 is within list, this fine algorithm is going to return a doubly linked list iterator um, whose current value is going to be 20. So that's pretty cool. Or, sorry, not 20. The current value is going to point to the node or store the address of the node whose data is 20. So then if you were to dereference the result of this expression, you would observe 20. Cool. Alrighty, that's all for today. I hope this uh, went okay. I'm like exhausted. So uh, I, I trust this came together though. I hope it makes sense. And if uh, you know something isn't quite clear, uh, don't hesitate to make a form po post and we can go ahead and um, make it clear. Alrighty, take care everyone. I'll see you all tomorrow.